We are live. I believe we are live. Welcome, everyone joining me now. The plant-based movement has grown immensely, both in the real world, its popularity, and certainly the online plant-based space um, has grown massively since I started doing this stuff online whenever, six, seven, eight years ago, right? And as a result, you've now got all these different sub-diets, all these different versions of a whole foods plant-based diet different sort of strands of methodology under this kind of wider whole foods plant-based umbrella. Um, and this provides lots of conflicting information for folks. I mean, it's a wealth of knowledge out there and you've got sort of, you can pick your poison, you can choose the particular approach that resonates with you most of all. You've got options, that's the plus side, but that can be incredibly overwhelming. Having too many options, it could be like, well, where do I start? One person is saying, this is the best way to lose weight. I've got a doctor over here saying, this is the best way to lose weight on a plant-based diet. This influencer, quote unquote, hate that word. This coach online, this teacher, this YouTuber is telling me that this was the way that they transformed their body what on earth do I do here, right? What about the fats? What about the nuts and seeds? Do I need to do the 50-50 play, right? This could be very overwhelming to have all of these different options, all these different versions of a plant-based diet. So I want to give you my two cents today on what is myth versus what is fact, what works versus what doesn't from a weight loss perspective, after helping now over 510 men and women across the world towards their ideal healthy body weight on a plant-based diet. Boom! Boom. Those are my credentials. No, I'm not a, a, a medical doctor. And no, I'm not a dietitian or a nutritionist. No, I'm not a personal trainer. What I am is a weight loss coach. And I help my clients go from A to Z, losing weight, transforming their relationship with food and getting fit on a plant-based diet. And I'm telling you the stuff that I've seen. Take it with a pinch of salt. Use your own experiences. Weigh my arguments up against other people's arguments. And hopefully today you can leave with a little bit of more clarity on what might, might be appropriate for you. Learn a little bit more about my approach if you're just coming into my stuff for the first time. Anyway, we're two minutes in here. Let's get into the first myth I want to talk about right now. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. This is pretty per pervasive, excuse me. It's dying down five years ago. This was everywhere. It is dying down now. I think some people are realizing that there's a little bit more nuance to this statement, but the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Well, that simply isn't true. And it isn't true. You're, you, the way you see this isn't true is you take one look at the keto dieters. I'm not an advocate for keto. I think you guys know this by now. That is the antithesis in many, many ways of my particular approach. However, keto works. Keto works for weight loss. It's not sustainable. I don't think it's healthy to try and cut out a, an essential, they argue carbohydrates aren't an essential macronutrient, but they are, in my mind, an essential macronutrient to try and totally eliminate carbohydrates. I don't think that's remotely sustainable, but it works. Okay, it's not right. It's not appropriate. Not my advice, but keto works and it's a high fat approach. How can it work if the fat you eat is the fat you wear? You just need to take one look at them. It simply isn't true. And it isn't true because if you're in a calorie deficit, I think most of us know this, but it's an important reminder because this gets lost in the plant-based space for whatever reason, for various reasons. But if you're in a calorie deficit, you will lose weight regardless of your proportion of macronutrients. The three macronutrients, of course, being carbohydrate, protein, and fat. So regardless how much protein versus fat versus carb, it makes up your daily diet. You'll lose weight if you're in a calorie deficit. Now, is there an argument that some macronutrients are more slimming or more fattening than others, aside from the calories they provide? Yes, most certainly, metabolically, they will all have a slightly different effect. Functionally, they provide, they do different things. Um, but at the same time, if you're in a calorie deficit, that sort of trumps their own individual value and the own individual influence they have over your ability to lose weight or not. Does that make sense? It's a bit jargony. It's a bit wordy. But no, the fat you eat cannot be the fat you wear if you're in a calorie deficit. In the same way, you could be on a very high carbohydrate or a high protein, but a low fat plant-based diet, you'll still gain weight if you're in a calorie surplus. Okay, so fat is not this Fat is not the deal breaker that I think a lot of folks in the plant-based space or who are new to the online plant-based space and see all this content, you know, from the sort of a more starch-based approach and they hear this messaging about fat. Um, I think I think it is, fat intake is not the deal breaker anyway that I think it gets made out to be in this space. Now, 
again, there is some there. Are, there's merit to the argument of fat. I'm just I'm just debating the single point. Sorry, there's merit to the argument that fat is fattening. Quite obviously, fat clues in the name, right? Um, all I'm I'm not denying that. Obviously, my clients, myself, I follow a low-fat plant-based diet, right? So I agree. I share a lot of these principles, but the idea that that whole macronutrient is arbitrarily and automatically fattening, I think is utterly ludicrous and is plainly, when you look at what people are doing out there to get weight loss results across the diet spectrum, it's plainly not true. And my clients right now, I mean, this is a great, I've been doing this for a long time, but if I can also refer to my clients, hopefully it adds more weight to my argument here, but my clients daily eat avocado toast. They have their tablespoon uh, of various seeds as per their meal plan on their oatmeal, okay? They're having tahini in their hummus and some of their other dressings, cashew-based dressings, and so on. So they're eating around 15, some of my clients, up to about 20% of calories from fat, which is, by the way, still considered a low-fat diet by sort of widely recognized uh, in the medical research community. That's in the nutrition research community. That's widely considered still a low-fat diet. So again, I'm an advocate of a low-fat plant-based diet, but quite literally, is it true the fat you eat, the fat you wear? Absolutely not. And I, I really think that's a myth that needs to die out now. So that's number one. Now, again, just to stress on this, um, I do not advise that you do sort of that you have loads of avocados and nuts and seeds because they are a big calorie contributor for those that don't know one gram of fat contains over double the amount of calories as one gram of protein and one gram gram of carbohydrates excuse me so fat is almost uh, over excuse me doubly as calorific as the other two macronutrients so a caution and a guardedness is rightly applied to fat rich plant foods like our avocados like olives like nuts and seeds and so on nut butters of course right rightly applied to those things but again the fact you eat the fat you wear quite literally in that in that literal sense it's not true as a sound bite it's a hyperbole and it might have some truth to it but it isn't literally correct do you see do you see the distinction there do you see the nuance anyway i'm probably being patronizing on this point you probably get it i'm going on and on now myth number two this is the instagram one at the moment this is driving me nuts beans are not a protein source Beans are not a protein source now, apparently. You have to have the fake meats and you have to have more tofu and tempeh to get enough protein on a plant-based diet. Um, beans are not a protein source. Beans are a source of any nutrient they contain. Beans contain protein, therefore they are a protein source. Um, that's it. Fruits and vegetables contain vitamins and minerals, let's say vitamin C, or let's do something that everyone understands, uh, everyone you know, it's so rudimentary that everyone kind of resonates. Potassium and bananas. Bananas contain potassium, so they are a source of potassium. Like, it's literally that straightforward. It's that plain and simple, right? If a food contains a nutrient, it is a source of that nutrient. So the statement that I've honestly heard this absurdly dumb, to put it in really frank terms, is condescending, but it's absurdly dumb. I honestly see this statement once a day on my Instagram feed from sort of fitness, vegan fitness influencers. This is utterly absurd. Beans are not a protein source. They quite literally are because they contain protein. Like it's the most stupid argument I've ever heard. Now, if they added more wet, if they added a little bit more nuance to that point and they said, okay, beans contain protein, but is there an argument that they contain enough protein if you have X, Y, and Z goals? Well, that's a different point entirely, and then we can have that debate, we can have that conversation. But beans are not a protein source. Again, blatantly untrue. Beans are incredible. And think about all the other things, guys, that beans contain, right? Fiber and all the other nutrients. Beans help you stay so full for so long comparatively, I find, to other plant-based food groups. And so I have a lot of new clients that come to me from kind of maybe a 50-50 plate background, and we start adding in more beans, and they're amazed at the fullness they can achieve because of that extra fiber content, and they're getting a little bit more of the old protein as well. So beans are not a protein source, clearly untrue. If you have 
Is there an argument, as I say, that if you have muscle building ambitions, if you're breastfeeding, if you're particularly athletic, and so therefore you're warranted to have a, a, a much higher protein diet than let's say the average person, the average Joe, again, patronizing term, but you know what I mean. Um, is there an argument there that beans might not be the, the most effective way to shuttle a load of protein into the metabolism? Yes. But that's not the point that gets made on Instagram. The point that gets made on Instagram is beans are not a protein source, which is an absurdly dumb take. Right, next one, next myth. So that's myth number two. You don't have to exercise to lose weight on a plant-based diet. What absolute nonsense that is. You don't have to exercise to lose weight on a plant-based diet. Um, it could be true for some of you. So I say what nonsense that is. It could be true for some of you that you don't have to do exercise and still lose weight because the prerequisite for weight loss, as I argued in myth number one here, is simply being in a calorie deficit. And you could do that with or without exercise. But again, that's not the statement. The statement is you don't have to exercise to lose weight on a plant-based diet. Well, you might have to. You might not have to, but the word might there is a really important distinction. So yeah, for my clients, the first month of Slim and Sustain, they're just doing walking. Um, and you know, average weight loss in the first week of my program is somewhere between sort of seven and maybe 12 pounds. So it's working. <laughs> like That's the average sort of range. Um, I say the average range. That's the range. Um, the average is somewhere within that. Uh, yeah, no, you, you don't have to do but that. I mean, they're doing some exercise, they're doing walking, right? But it doesn't need to be intense. So the idea that exercise may be overplayed in the equation of weight loss, I do agree with. I think the mainstream health and weight loss world generally maybe sort of overrates the role of, uh, overestimates the role of, of exercise in the equation of weight loss. I feel the plant-based space in wishing to be counterculture underestimates the role of exercise in weight loss. And I just think, not to be super cliched, I think there is some reasonable middle ground on this. And I think, you know, some understanding that exercise increases metabolic rate, gets you through more calories in layperson's terms, um, and actually makes it easier in many cases to be in a calorie deficit because you can eat a little bit more food. Um, and this is, again, just from a weight loss perspective, I haven't even touched, and I'm not going to, because it's not the point of this stream, but I haven't even touched the more wide sort of health and, and well-being benefits of doing exercise too, obviously. Um, so yeah, I think exercise, no, you don't have to do exercise to lose weight because all you need to lose weight is a calorie deficit. You could do that with or without, without exercise. But I think exercise is a tool that makes it easier for most of us. And it's a tool that's necessitous in other sort of domains under the health and, and well-being umbrella. Mental health as well. We just spoke about physical, but I feel amazing when I do exercise. It's a great stress reliever for me. I don't know about you guys. So yeah, you don't have to do loads of exercise to lose weight, but it can be a huge advantage. And I would encourage anyone right now that's sat here, and I covered this in my last YouTube video, actually, on, uh, not live stream, but regular video, where I talked about the three reasons why you're not losing weight on a plant-based diet. But uh, uh, I've lost my train of thought. You don't have to, anyway, the point I was making, is you, like, you don't have to do loads of it, but I think it makes it easier. I think if you're, that was it. I think if you're sort of resting on your laurels with this sort of, you've really taken to heart this mantra of it's all about the nutrition. Well, I don't think it is all about the nutrition. I think the nuance there is that it's largely about the nutrition, but it's not only about the nutrition. Point is, a bit of exercise can help. I'm going in circles. Next one, a calorie is not a calorie. Now, this is not exclusive to the plant-based space, admittedly, but a calorie is, a, it, it is a calorie. Yeah, a calorie is a calorie. That, the term calorie is just a, a way to describe the unit of measure of energy, um, a, a unit of energy. So a calorie is a calorie and it breaks down as a calorie and it provides fuel like a calorie does. Now, the source of calories obviously differs. So the source of your calorie intake will differ. And the things that a calorie comes with, fiber and other nutrients, for example, that will make a difference, of course, to your diet and your results. But the idea that a calorie is not uh, excuse me, is not a calorie yet, which is again something I hear in the plant-based space. I hear it elsewhere too, but I hear it in the plant-based space. A calorie is not a calorie. No, it's not It's not literally true. A cal and I talked about this with Dr. Barnard as well in our interview, you know, a couple of months back. A calorie is a calorie, but the things that calories come with will make a difference to metabolic rate and your overall health and well-being too, hormonally, gut bacteria, therefore inflammation, all of these, let's say, secondary factors that affect weight loss beyond 
calories in versus calories out. Does that make sense? So a calorie actually is a calorie, but the distinction there is that we should think carefully about where those calories are coming from. So we're getting plenty of nutrients and plenty of bang for buck, right? What I mean by bang for buck is if I went and ate a, a chocolate bar right now, which might be 500, you know, one of those sort of size chocolate bars, which might be, uh, what are they usually about 120 grams or so, so like four ounces. Um, that's like 500 or 600 calories gone. Vegan chalky, just gone 500 or 600 calories there. Now a calorie is a calorie. It's gonna have, relatively speaking, in, in a caloric sense, not from a wider nutrition perspective, but it's gonna have the same effect as 500 calories of watermelon. It's not, but just in isolation of, I'll get clipped up on that. So I wanna be clear, it's not that straightforward, but the calorie itself is gonna have the same effect on the body as 500 calories of the dark chocolate or whatever it is, whatever chocolate. Um, now, again, it's not that straightforward because there's all these things that the chocolate's coming with, but you get the point. In isolation, the calories will have the same impact. They'll simply be used as fuel in the same way. However, and here's the distinction, like I'm going to get so much more full on 500 calories of watermelon. In fact, I'll struggle to even eat 500 calories of watermelon because that's a whole bunch of watermelon, right? That's like half a small to medium watermelon, bang, like 500 calories. Like that's a lot to do in like one sitting. Whereas I could wolf that chocolate, that 120 grams of chocolate down, you better believe in about three minutes, right? So yeah, a calorie is a calorie, but we should think consciously about the source of those calories. So we get maximum satisfaction. This is really important when you're, when you're trying to maintain a calorie deficit. This is what I do for, for my clients, of course. I've got kind of a list of about 15 to 20 of my top sort of bang for buck foods that have an incredible intersection between low calorie amount per gram per ounce and feet sort of a, um, a really great satisfaction effect. And I obviously intentionally put lots of these, intersperse lots of these in my clients' meals throughout the day. So they get fullness and they can add bulk to their meals without adding that many calories. So it's really important that whilst you understand that a calorie is a calorie and you recognize that fundamental law of weight loss, you also think, but where are my calories coming from? Because I want to get as much bang for buck as possible and make it as easy as possible for me to stay satisfied still in a calorie deficit, makes sense. Next one, next myth then, 50-50 plate is the only way to lose weight absolutely not. Again, the way that you lose weight is by being in a calorie deficit. If the 50-50 plate works for you, it's because you're in a calorie deficit. It's not because you're following the 50-50 plate. You understand? It's not because you're adhering to the rules of a given approach. It's because you're in a calorie deficit. That's the rule that trumps all. Makes sense? So you could lose weight or not lose weight on a 50-50 plate or not on a 50-50 plate. Again, pick your poison. There are many ways to follow a calorie deficit. I love my slim and sustain approach. I'm going to explain more about that in a second. But the 50-50 plate will work and it won't work, depending on whether you're in a calorie deficit or not makes sense but it isn't a must the idea that that's the way that you lose weight and that's what you must do and that's the only way or the most effective way to lose weight that might not be a given for many of you watching this and finally here you need 30 grams of protein for every meal this is what i spoke about with tia now since she mentioned that to me i've been like yeah i'm now seeing this everywhere like again even in the vegan the vegan plant-based space i'm seeing like you must have 30 grams of protein for every meal it's a totally arbitrary number absolutely not absolutely not and again from a weight loss perspective which is what this video is about um your weight loss is more predicated on calories than it is protein intake again like i said earlier those three macronutrients and how much of them you use is important and they do perform different functions carbs protein and fat they do play a different role in the body you need all of them not necessarily equally but you need all of them throughout the day and so or in a day let's say to be more realistic with it less perfectionist um but your relationship between those three things, again, is trumped, is dwarfed by this, this conversation about calories, again, from a weight loss perspective. Now, there are arguments about body recomposition. You know, if you want to maintain or grow some muscle, you need a little bit more protein, a little bit less of this. You know, if you're a particularly athletic person, you're obviously going to need more carbohydrates in your diet to fuel all of that stuff. I say, obviously, a lot of people don't know this, but to me, obviously. Um, so, Macronutrients are important, don't want to diminish their role, but in the equation of weight loss, the statement that you need 30 grams of protein for every meal to lose weight, simply not true. You need adequate protein, adequate carbohydrate, and adequate fat for your particular goals. But if your goal is to lose weight, all you need is a calorie deficit. Again, there's different ways to manipulate macronutrients to help with that or to maintain or create a certain physique. But no, it's not that straightforward that you must have this ever heralded 30 grams of protein per day for every meal. Now, if you're trying to build muscle, is there an argument that some 
you know, equal distribution of protein throughout the day would be advantageous to feed that. So it's me metabolized on sort of a drip feed. Yes, but that's not the view that I'm trying to tackle here today. I'm just talking about the weight loss stuff. So as you can see, there are lots of different versions of the whole food plant-based diet, as I said at the start. There's lots of conflicting opinions out there. It can be confusing, even very, very overwhelming. And the problem with that is it stops us from taking action, right? There's all these different opinions out there. I don't know what to do, right? I'm hearing all these different conflicting arguments. It can be really hard to orient yourself and know what to actually try first or actually stay committed to something because then you hear another point of view elsewhere and you're like, well, maybe I do need nuts and seeds now, right? And it's like back and forth, back and forth, that pendulum swinging. I think the point most of all that I want to make today is that anything can work providing that you're in that calorie deficit. So pick your poison, as I've said a few times. I'm lucky. I found the approach that that works for me. It's taken a while and my clients are crushing it right now. So this has changed my life, but it's also changing my clients' lives. Okay. And they get, along with myself, they get to eat some fat, right? They get to eat bread. Um, they get to eat, you know, avocado toast every morning if they want it, if it's on their meal plan. They get to eat that delicious fruit to sort of answer their natural sweet tooth. They do have to do some exercise because it's good for them and it actually can help you on the scale, but it isn't all that extreme and they don't need a gym membership and they don't have to do the 50 50 play right instead i tell them exactly what and how much to eat so they can still lose weight but not so aggressively that they feel ravenous all the time and i think that's my whole slim and sustain approach that's my whole philosophy that's my whole shtick that's what changed my life and now that's the template that i'm using to teach my clients i don't have I don't do one thing and then teach my clients something else. This is what changed my life. And therefore, it, I sort of just built it into a program because people really resonated with it years ago when I started making videos and saying, hey, guys, like I've just increased my fat slightly from the starch solution. I feel really, really good doing this. And people are like, oh, that's interesting. Hey, guys, I'm eating a little bit more fruit than the sort of starch based community um, uh, advises. Oh, people were like, hey, that's interesting, Ryan. Hey, guys, like I'm eating sandwiches. I'm eating bread on a plant based diet. People are like, what? You can do that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. But so-and-so doctor said you can't. I said, yeah, but another doctor says you can. And I think about it from my lens and my understanding of nutrition. I think if it's the right bread, that's totally acceptable. And it just was, it's gone from there. My whole channel has blown up, not to toot my own horn from there, because people resonate with that whole slim and sustained thing. Okay, a, a sustainable and realistic plant based diet for me is what I found. And obviously, that's what I'm now teaching here on the Fit with Ryan Adams YouTube channel to my clients on my Instagram, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So if all of that floats your boat, you can click the link down below, fill out the form, and I'll be in touch with more details about slim and sustain. But hopefully for now, this was useful in debunking some of those common weight loss myths that we're seeing in the plant based space. Okay, take care, folks. Bye.